Hi folks, Jake von Slat here, and I got the welder working. Uh, you'll recall, I bought this on uh, Craigslist for 100 bucks. It's a home-built, engine-driven welder, probably from early 1950s, uh, because it's powered by a 1946 Austin Dorset engine. That's a four-cylinder, four-stroke uh, engine from a British car, uh, produces, I think it was about 60 horsepower when I looked up online. Uh, and that generator, I'm sorry, that uh, engine turned a generator from a World War II aircraft, uh, 24 volt, 200 amp um, uh, generator. Um, I got the thing working and I went to test it out uh, and the, uh, I, I couldn't get any real amperage out of it. I'm guessing, you know, it was maybe producing 20 or 30 amps. I could, I could barely uh, uh, get an arc. Uh, with the stick, um, and I certainly couldn't sustain an arc. Uh, and then smoke started coming out of the generator, and when I opened up the generator, I found the commutator and the brushes all burnt up. So I think I think there had been a short in there all along, or perhaps the um, the varnish decayed over time, and a, uh, a, a wire from the armature came out and struck the stator coils and uh, uh, you know something happened something bad happened to that generator and it wasn't it wasn't going to work uh, so what I decided to do was replace it with a modern alternator and this is a 250 amp high output uh, Ford alternator that I got on Amazon it was like it was ridiculously cheap it was like $129 I mean I, I remember buying a replacement alternator for my 1976 uh, 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 Mercury Grand Marquis, and, and it was like 200 bucks, and this was a long time ago. Um, and this is, this is a much nicer alternator. Uh, so it's a 250 amp high output alternator, um, and uh, to couple it to the shaft, I had to make a pulley. Um, but I managed to cobble everything together and uh, uh, get it operating. Um, and as you can see, it, uh, it's doing a pretty good job welding up uh, my anvil, which I'll show you later. Um, and although, you know, granted, this is the very first time I ever stick welded. Uh, so, you know, this isn't a great looking weld, but it's definitely going to hold these pieces of scrap steel together. And uh, uh, I, I am pretty pleased with uh, the performance of this machine. And uh, I hope over time I'll be able to make uh, uh, much prettier joins. Uh, but let's uh, let's take a closer look at the machine as it as it is now, and uh, I'll show you some of the uh, modifications that I've made and some of the enhancements. Okay, so here's the business end. This is that high output alternator that I was talking about. And these, of course, have integrated diodes inside of them. So I disassembled the alternator and I removed the diode pack. And then uh, I uh, brought the stator wires out. And, of course, all automotive alternator, uh, alternators are three-phase, so I brought the uh, six connections for the stator wires out, um, figured out their phase and their sequence, and then I was able to wire them together, in this case, in a star configuration. Um, the, uh, the center of the star is all connected together, and then the three wires from the alternator go over to this 400 amp three-phase rectifier bridge that uh, that I got on eBay and I'm trying to remember how much this was it was uh, um, it was again it was much cheaper than I thought it would be uh, I think it was like 49 bucks um, maybe in 59 bucks uh, but uh, it was definitely under 100 bucks for a 400 amp three-phase rectifying bridge. I uh, um, put that on an aluminum heat sink and then 
I put a 12-volt uh, fan on that aluminum heat sink and hooked it up to the 12-volt power. I actually think this is, I, I actually don't think this is necessary. I think there's, uh, um, I, it just doesn't seem to get that hot. So I, I, I think that fan is probably extra and not really needed. Um, I, I retained the, uh, the existing uh, connectors for the uh, stinger and the ground clamp. Um, and I reused most of the internal wiring, including the uh, arc reactor, not arc reactor. I keep saying arc reactor, but but that's not what it's called. It will come to me in a minute. It's basically a big choke coil that limits the uh, current inrush, uh, helps you control the, uh, stabilize the arc. Arc stabilizer, that's what it's called. Uh, helps you stabilize the arc. Now the, um, uh, the key bit of, uh, of technology that I needed to put this all together, uh, you notice this is a six groove, uh, typical six groove alternator pulley. Well, I needed to make a larger six groove pulley and um, here let me come over here and see if I can get a better view of that perhaps from the side. I needed to make a six groove pulley to go on a one inch shaft uh, to drive that belt. Now I looked online I found uh, pulleys that would work, but they were like $300 and really kind of a specialty item. Uh, so what I ended up doing here is um, casting one out of aluminum. And uh, that was a saga in and of itself. I'm, I'm making a whole another video on that. But that is a 3D printed lost PLA uh, a cast aluminum pulley with a machine steel insert in the center um, uh, to mount it to the shaft and as, as you can see it runs true and uh, uh, it took me like four tries to perfect this uh, process but now I, I'm really pleased I, I'm able to make fairly precise parts uh, 3D print them and then cast them in aluminum um, and like I said, there's another video on that, uh, which uh, uh, I'll post shortly. Um, so here's a, here's a shot of the engine. The engine really didn't need much work. It ran pretty well. I had to do some tapping on that carburetor to uh, get the float bowl uh, valve to, uh, to open up. Um, but everything seems to work here just fine. Uh, there's a solenoid on the throttle, uh, and I put a... Um, I put a switch on the stinger uh, so that when I flip this switch, it revs the engine up to uh, to welding speed. And uh, that's the solenoid that opens the uh, the throttle. <laughs> it's a, it's like a circa 1950s uh, uh, electromechanical solenoid. It's kind of a neat thing in and of itself. Um, up on the control panel. Uh, ignition and engine start, choke. This uh, is a manually engages that uh, solenoid. This is the uh, connector for the remote uh, um, throttle up. Of course, the stingers. Uh, this is a, a big, heavy potentiometer. It's 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 like a. Uh, 200 watt uh, uh, potentiometer. I'll show you the back of that. Uh, and then uh, the meters um, are their voltage meters. One is for uh, battery voltage, charging voltage for the 12 volt system, and the other tells me what the welding voltage is. I have a shunt and an amp meter, and I do, in plan I do intend to install a uh, an amp meter to replace that voltage meter so I can get some idea of how many amps this thing is is producing. Uh, it is a it's a 250 amp alternator but it is probably not producing 250 usable welding amps. Okay here's the back of the control panel and that's the arc stabilizer I was talking about and it's basically just a big inductor and smooths out the arc. This is the relay and it does two things. When I flip that switch on the stinger cable, it engages the, um, the armature current for the uh, 
alternator uh, and it also revs up the engine with that solenoid. Uh, I'd like to add a time delay function here. The alternate get, alternator gets pretty hot while you're welding and what I would like to happen is when I turn that switch off I would like the armature current to immediately be cut and then the engine RPM to stay high for a little while to in increase the cooling. Um, I may even uh, maybe even add a temperature sensor uh, so that the uh, the alternator gets cooled down to a certain temperature before the engine RPM kicks off. Um, I'm going to play with that a little bit. Uh, here's that big uh, potentiometer I was talking about and that adjusts the armature current for the uh, welding alternator um, and that uh, uh, when it's all the way up uh, it's at well hopefully around 200 amps and then uh, uh, as you reduce it it reduces the armature current and thus the welding current. And like I say I have a, uh, a shunt and an ammeter that I'm going to install in there to uh, uh, so I can see how much current it's actually producing. Uh, let's see, over here. Um, this is where the generator originally, originally was, and I used this space for a starting battery. It's just a lawnmower uh, uh, riding tractor uh, battery. Um, and uh, the ignition uh, coil. I replaced the generator. It had a um, Lucas generator on it. Uh, that wasn't working. I replaced it with a um, alternator from uh, my old Toyota Yaris and um, uh, it's got a four groove uh, pulley on it uh, but I didn't want to make another pulley for it so uh, I just used a large V-belt pulley and it sort of rides on top of the four grooves and it seems to work just fine so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, the only other uh, thing that I did to the engine um, uh, besides change the coolant was I, I put on a muffler. It was, it was pretty loud and uh, uh, I just got the, the cheapest Walker muffler I could get on Amazon and installed that on top and uh, um, it's much, much quieter, much more pleasant to, uh, to work around. And that's pretty much the welder. Uh, some modifications for the future. I mentioned the stator wires. They're wired in a star configuration. Uh, my understanding is you can get more current out of these if you wire them in a delta configuration. Uh, so that's something that I'm going to try. And uh, these are all broken out individually with these uh, what are they, six gauge wires. Um, so I'll be able to uh, uh, just change the way they uh, connect up to the uh, three-phase regulator, uh, not regulator, um, diode, uh, bridge rectifier to, uh, to try it in delta configuration. Uh, another possibility is I think I've got plenty of horsepower to add a second um, alternator and uh, uh, another rectifier and make this a maybe 400 amp welder. Uh, that's something I might do if I have a project where I need a 400 amp welder. Uh, right now, I really don't. Um, uh, one of the other things that I'd like to do is get a spool gun for it. Uh, so I can do uh, uh, MIG welding on heavier things. I've got a little 90 amp MIG welder that does mostly what I need. Uh, but, you know, if I'm going to build something out of quarter inch plate, that's, that's not going to be big enough. Uh, and a spool gun on this, uh, I think, would be a pretty nifty setup. Um, and that's about it. So, uh, this is Jake Von Slatt, and I'll see you next time.